interesting. Because it gets. And I don't know what else. Well, guys, um, welcome, everybody. All the millions listening online. Welcome to Maple Syrup number 285, episode 20 of our beauty class. In 1909, she played Joan of Arc in Friedrich Schiller's The Maid of Orléans. This was produced on a huge scale at Harvard University. Um, there's a little excerpt here talking about the reproduction. The experiment of producing Schiller's Maid of Orléans beneath starry skies, dot, 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 was carried out by blank. And a company numbering about 2,000 persons, dot, 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 Harvard Stadium, a special electric light was installed, a great cathedral erected, background constructed, and a realistic forest created. Miss Blank was accorded an ovation at the end of the performance. You know who Miss Blank is. Favorite lecture of all time, favorite maple syrup, we're talking about the one and only Maud Adams. Miss Adams was accorded an ovation at the end of the performance. Maud Ad Ma uh, Adams is so, so crazy cool. And I'm doing my best to convince you of that fact over the forthcoming however many minutes this episode ends up being. But I just want to say right off the bat how amazing it is that our last maple syrup, number 284-19, was on Joan of Arc. And in our kind of... Uh, Actors, episode number one of our beauty class. The first citation is from this woman, our titular character today in Soul Focus, Maud Adams, playing Joan of Arc, Maid of Orleans, 1909. The following is an unattributed interview concerning the subject of today's film, conducted by a journalist, henceforth called A, and a quote-end quote expert on all things American film. And Americana, henceforth called B. A, who is the greatest American actress in our nation's history? B, Maude Adams. A, why? B, she is so boss. Truly hard to explain. A. Please try. B. Incredible actor. Photogenic and at ease on stage, but humble and gracious too. A private person. Not about the limelight. She just crushed on stage. I mean theatrical domination. I'm talking about being a better Joan of Arc than maybe Joan of Arc was, and then she would leave and just live her life. Donated a lot of land to nuns so they could build a convent. I mean, could she be any more based? A, okay, thank you. Shifting gears a bit here. Who is the greatest American, just American, whatever field, whatever time, in our nation's history? B, Maud Adams. Maude Adams, you want to hear her kind of like on stage set, her filmography, I guess you could say, although largely for the purpose of theater. Let's get her dates out of the way right away. Maude Adams is born in 1872 and dies in 1953, 80 years old. Dies in the 81st year of her, of her life. She never turned 81. 1872 to what? 1872 to 1953. Those are the dates of Miss Maude Adams's life. 
I'm going to read you these different plays and the year after them when she performed them. The Paymaster, 1888. Lord Chumley, same year. A Midnight Bell, 1889. Men and Women, 1890. The Masked Ball, 1892. Two in uh, 1894. The Butterflies and the Bobble Shop. Bobble spelled B-A-U-B-L-E. 1895, The Imprudent Young Couple. Also 1895, Christopher Jr. The Squire of Dames, 1896, also 1896, Rosemary. 1897, and then a reproduction, kind of a rerun again in 1904. 1897 and 1904, The Little Minister. Romeo and Juliet, 1899. Maude Adams already, I mean, absolute destruction level in a good way. Crushing, positively. Domination, uh, again, in a good way. <laughs> She's so boss. She's so cool. Um, what stage, uh, I mean, did she play in New York? I can tell you all of everywhere. that. Yeah. <laughs> so one of her great debuts, she's in a theater company for five years. One of her great plays debuts, you know, on Broadway, New York. She was, uh, you're going to find out pretty soon. Maude Adams, a lot of people do not know who she was. She's very unknown still, sadly. One of the first true kind of star actresses. And her career peters out. I mean, she's really at that point becoming, you know, older. A lot of her heydays in the 1890s are in her 20s. Remember, she's born in the 1870s. Um, so by the time talkies come about post 1920s, she's already on the way out. Uh, even though, again, I'll, I don't, don't want to you know, get too far ahead of her biography, but, but to your question, yes, she becomes extraordinarily renowned. At one point, she's making basically a million dollars a year of today's money. She's one of the first kind of like, I don't need to do any other job but acting, star actors. Mm -hmm. Why is Maude Adams a part of a Vandal Catholic, Catholic class? Was she a Catholic? No. Did she do a bunch of Catholic stuff? Yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. An incredible Catholic legacy from this woman who apparently never converted to Catholicism. But when I talk to, to tell you more about her story later, maybe she did. Maude Adams' number one quality was extreme privacy. We'll talk about that in a second. She even, at that point in her life, comments about paparazzi and whatever and like, no, no, I'm not going to give my private life to the, to the, to the public. No, none of their business. I'm going to go hang out with my dogs. One time paparazzi come and try to find her. And I get it. If Maud Adams was around, I'd be like, I want to go talk to Maud Adams. I want to give Maud Adams a high five. I want to say, Maud, I have got a cup of coffee. Would you like to join me for a cup of coffee? Comma, Maud. She can sing the Folgers song. You can sing the Folgers song. I'll drink coffee. <laughs> exactly. Should we do it again, guys? We might. <laughs> the best part of waking up is Maud Adams on the stage. It can be edited. No, it's better. It's better normal. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. She can sing that. And I would just let, like, watch her sing it, and because we have modern day technology to record it and make tons of money. Uh, people try to come find Maude Adams once, which is chilling with her dogs, actual dogs, not D A W G S, like my girl Maude and her dogs. I don't mean it like her, her companions, her friends, her actual D O G S canines. And they try to find her on her farm, and I kid you not, she hides behind a tree until they leave. <laughs> like, I don't blame her. Yeah, exactly. I don't blame her at all. She's extraordinarily private. So, not a Catholic. This is also a good primer. Anyone watching our show, again, we're getting just like millions and millions of new viewers, not even like a week every day. So people are new to the program. The beautiful, the, as in the transcendental, the good, the true, and the beautiful, which God alone fully represents, right? These transcendental qualities. This class has all been about, and you all in this room have heard this a million times, so forgive me, but you know, the way that beauty, this class about beauty, the beautiful leads to God's ultimate beauty, things that are true and good. God, again, alone possessing these three qualities in their, in their fullness. And so we say, sometimes we have lectures that are just like pure, this person was a Catholic, that's why they're in a Catholic class. We also have non-Catholic features. This is one of them. Maude Adams, the truth is always very important. That'd be discussed. Like I'm a huge fan of Maude Adams. Did I mention that? Is that obvious enough? I love Maude Adams. 
That'd be so gross if I was like, oh, but, but, she, but she was actually a Catholic. Like, that's, no, there is no evidence that she converted to Catholicism. What I'm saying is if she actually did, I wouldn't be surprised because, and we're going to talk about why in a second. But again, a huge feature of her life was, on the one hand, crazy stardom, deep, deep, deep privacy um, when she's off the stage. All right. Um, so, Little Minister, 1897-1904. Romeo and Juliet, 1899. La Elon, 1900. Quality Street, 1901. In Quality Street, she plays a sick character. Sick as in cool. Her name is Phoebe. That's pretty, that's pretty freaking cool. Like, if you didn't think Maude Adams get cooler, Maude, a.k.a. Phoebe, from Quality Street Adams, 1901. 1903, this is a great name. This is a real name, I promise. 1903, Maude Adams in The Pretty Sister of Jose. <laughs> 1905, Oppo Me Thumb. I don't know what that means. Like, operate on my thumb, or I don't know what it means. I'm an Irish guy, like, top of the morning to you. Oppo Me Thumb, doc. I don't know what, I don't know what this means, but Oppo Me Thumb, 1905. I'm skipping over one in a second, her most famous role. I'll come back to that. Anyone watching to online has seen the photos of her in this role. And you already know kind of where I'm going with this, probably. Um, but 1908, Quality Street again, same year, The Jesters. This is a great one. I want to know this. 1908, Maude Adams in What Every Woman Knows. What does every woman know? I want to know. Like Mel Gibson was in a movie once called What Women Want, I think it was called, where he could like read women's minds. That's a good skill to have. I want to know what, what every woman knows. Uh, <laughs> and later on, a couple more, just led, The Legend of Leonora, 1914. 1914, Outbreak of the Great War. Maude Adams at this point is still a young woman, but you know, older as an actress, 72. So she's, she's 42 years old at this point when she stars in Legend of Leonora. And one of her last credits here, 1916, A Kiss for Cinderella. Why did you say she didn't make it to 80? Because she was born in, no, no, she's 81. She was born in 72 and dies in 53. She would have turned 81 that year, dies at oh, age 80. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I didn't read her most famous role. Maude Adams is most famous for playing Peter Pan on stage. And yeah. Okay. And, and, to, and in right. fact, I'll talk about this in a second. She, the, Peter Pan has runs in 1905, 06, 12, and 1915. In 1905, when she debuts as Peter Pan, um, she is what at that age? 33, I guess. Maude Adams, people see on, will see, who are watching online, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about to you. Um, do we talk about beauty in the physical sense off in this class? Really? No. Go ahead, sorry. No, no, Was go ahead. this the first time Peter Pan had been put on stage? It very well may be, yeah. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, isn't some guy named like Barry, the author yeah, of... Yeah, yeah. I think he like... This is how... Maude Adams was a legit star. Mm -hmm. Like Maude Adams is big time... They think like, I'm serious, like today's, I don't know, like a Jennifer Lawrence in the 90s and you know, Jennifer Aniston, like... Uh, What's her name? Angelina Jolie, like an A-list, Gwyneth Paltrow, whatever, whoever you want to, you know, earlier, Audrey Hepburn, blah, 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 we can continue this list. Um, but it's like, Maude Adams was legit. She's not some just like, oh, whatever, local girl. Like she was legit, legit, big time movie star. We're talking about, of course, so that's an anachronism, theater. She was a theater actress. So even more artistic talent, perhaps, having to do a live and all that. This is, you know, prior to film, really. Um, yeah. The guy, Barry, the, the writer, wants this thing adapt. I think the first person to like play that character on stage is Maude Adams. Mm -hmm. um, do we often talk about beauty in the physical sense in this class? No. We often talk about beauty of the soul. Maude Adams is regarded by people as perhaps the most beautiful American woman of all time. Some people say. Dead serious. What is my two cents on Maude Adams' Maude Adams's beauty? She's very beautiful. Very beautiful. I say that with all respect and like there's no punchline or jokes coming. She's a very beautiful woman, was blessed with, with, with beauty. Um, she also had a very, very youthful appearance. So there, there's one of the kind of like um, thumbnails. You guys have a photo of her? Yeah. 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 That's her? Show me. That's a very modern looking photo. That is her. Yeah, yeah. That's her. Exactly. Wow. Um, yeah, think about, you know, photography's already really good then, you know, 1890s, whatever. Uh, Maude Adams, there's a photo of her playing Phoebe in, in Quality Street in 1901. Sorry, I 
in, in, in 1901 and she, you know, is um, what, almost 30 years old and she easily could pass for 1920. She's very youthful. So, youthful looking. So when she plays Peter Pan in 1905, yeah, she could pass for the Peter Pan character even though she's a 33 year old woman. She, uh, she always had a very youthful appearance. Like even into her like 50s, maybe like she was 29. Very youthful, all that. So again, we'll talk about that later on too, like, like her qualities. This class is often not about physical beauty by itself. It's more about beauty of the soul, beauty, virtue, and that kind of thing. It's not just like, wow, you know, Brad Pitt is so handsome in seven years in Tibet. But that, but that does matter for actors too. That, that is an important quality, obviously. And again, Maude Adams, not my words, but, uh, you know, kind of by popular acclaim. Some people say Maude Adams is the most beautiful American woman ever. Um, that's, you know, impossible, obviously, to say. It's not scientific. But I guess if you're being put into that consideration, I guess you're fairly good looking. Um, okay, so next point. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Later in life, Adams would often take long sabbaticals to Catholic convents. In fact, in 1919, she has some kind of breakdown. I don't know what it is. Like, you know, anxiety, depression, I don't know. We've gotten a lot better now, I think, with mental health, you know, and all that, especially out of the First World War, shell shock, PTSD, I don't know what, just the stress of being famous. But she credits the sisters, um, these religious sisters in New York, with helping her make a recovery. Maybe even just giving her comfort, just, you know, spiritual direction, whatever it is. Now, now you already kind of see why she's in this Catholic class. Okay. That became a huge theme of her life. She was born actually in Salt Lake City, Utah in the 1870s. Interestingly, you'd think, was not LDS. I think one of her family was, but her father was not, perhaps was not raised in the religion. I'll give you her biography soon in a second, but yeah, go ahead. They say there's more Catholics in Salt Lake City yeah. than Mormons. The Mormons live out of the country. Right. Brad said that there's more Catholics in Salt Lake City than uh, the more, the more like deeply, deeply LDS counties or in the rural parts. Yeah. But I mean, but back then, 1870s too, you, you assume almost like Salt Lake City is going to be some Mormon connection. She does have LDS connections. But um, Maude Adams, again, like born debatably Mormon, like has some family, but maybe not really a religious family. I don't know. I, her early upbringing is not very clear on that. She attends a Presbyterian school as a, as a young girl, but she's also maybe not part of that uh, branch of Protestantism. She spends a lot of her adult years going on retreats to Catholic monasteries. Okay, I already love Maude Adams. When I heard that, that's good enough for me. I'm going to do an episode on Maude Adams. <laughs> like, that's Catholic enough, but it doesn't stop there. Maude Adams in 1922 donated her estates, her land, in Lake Rokonkoma, R-O-N-K-O-N-K-O-M-A, like Ron Concoma, Ron Concoma, New York, to the Sisters of the Senecal, and they build a novitiate and retreat house. So, listen to this. This is Lauren M. Cummings, an article from August 22nd, 2008, very recently. Located on 45 acres of land in Rokonkoma is a place of great stillness and beauty. The convent of Our Lady, Se Our Lady Senecal is a retreat for all who feel the need to break away from the daily rush. It is also a very interesting piece of Long Island history. The land was donated to the Senecal by none other than Maude Adams, one of Long Island's most interesting residents. Very, very cool. Maude Adams is like in a greatest legacy. Her bequeathment, like her giving on to future generations because more about her, her private life, she never marries. She has no children. Again, I know very little about her private life, um, but she did not like pass things on down. To, she didn't have kids. Um, is, is giving this land to have this convent built. Lauren M. Cummings continues in her article, the home she purchased on 80, 80 acres of farmland in 1900, Maude Adams, at that point she was 28, a star already, had a century earlier been built by one of the Smithtown Smiths. The Smiths were a prominent family on Long Island back in the day. A few years and purchases later, the land had grown to span hundreds of acres. Wow. It was here that Maude lived, rather hid, for over 20 years. Uh, Maude valued her private time very highly. She is quoted as saying, quote, I don't see why an actress must give her personality to the world, though it seems to be expected. And those who currently investigate her private life are not always careful how they use their information, end quote. 
Maude traveled incognito once more. All credit here to the author's article from 2008, Lauren M. Cummings. Maude traveled incognito and refused many social engagements, preferring her farm and her dogs for company. She was also very fond of riding and of a small artificial lake by her house. In fact, there is, once, there is one incident where a group from New York rode across Sandy Garth hoping for a sight of her, much like modern you know, paparazzi or whatever. Quote, Maude actually hid behind a tree until they were gone. <laughs> um, and then here, it seemed Maude gave in, in other ways. When she learned the St. Regis Canical in New York City was overcrowded, she arranged for the donation of the property to the sisters in 1922. This would become what is now Senecal in Rome, Concoma. Uh, Maude felt she owed them a debt after the sisters helped her through a breakdown in 1919. Lauren Cummings doesn't specify what this was. You know, again, stress from fame, a bad relationship, personal, I don't know what it was. Again, Maude Adams, it increases her awesomeness, I think, that she's like shrouded in mystery. The most beautiful American woman of all time, the best actress, all kind of like hype and mystique, and we know so little about her. But she gave money to, she gave land, you know, and her personal like holdings to build a monastery. It's pretty sweet. We know that she loved to retreat to Catholic monasteries. Would I be at all surprised if Maude Adams converted to Catholicism secretly? Of course I wouldn't. Now, again, it would be absolutely inappropriate and wrong to say, oh, I think she did. I want her on my team. I do want her on my team. I do. Uh, breaking news. Human draft. Roshan Kraszewski selects Maude Adams, number one overall. I do want her on my team. She's awesome. <laughs> Maude Adams is super, super cool. I definitely want her on our team. I, First, yeah, first pick overall. I would love it if Maude Adams turned out to be a you know secret Catholic. It'd be sweet. There's no evidence of that. But she was very much involved with the faith and these sisters throughout her life. Again, I can't stress this point enough. I'm, I'm being repetitive, forgive me. But the fact that she constantly, like her hobby, her pastime was to go visit monasteries is cool. I mean, that's, imagine if you had an actor and his favorite thing to do is go visit, you know, like Italian monasteries. Every time he's not filming, He's always at this Benedictine monastery. I mean, you'd assume like he has a favorable view of Catholicism or else why would he do that all the time? Exact same issue here. Um, she died age 80 and is interred at the cemetery of the Sisters of the Canical. She's actually buried at this monastery, Maud Adams is. Canical today contains a few buildings, including Maud's former guest house by the lake she enjoyed so much, as well as a much larger novitiate building. Now, I have breaking news, maybe sad news, from uh, June 2020, the Kennical Retreat Center in Rokonkoma puts out a notice saying they've sold it. But I say it's sad maybe because they say they found good hands. Um, this is now, I found this on, on, on Facebook actually, from the Senecal Retreat Center, the thing that Maude Adams donated to build, listen to their note. A bunch of sisters signed this here. Deeply grateful to you, we promise you our prayer, we hold you in our hearts. The middle paragraph says, in our letter of November 20th, 2019, we shared with you that after much prayer, dialogue, and work with consultants, the Seneca Sisters in North American province acknowledge with deep sorrow, we do not have the sister personnel and energy to continue our ministry at the Rokonkoma Seneca to the extent we have been doing. Our North American province transformative visioning process led us to another poignant moment of concrete change. The Diocese of Rockville Center in New York has purchased the Rokokoma Senecal to be used as a residence for retired priests. That's pretty sweet. That's great. Go Mod. Mod found this thing for the Senecal Sisters. Now it's for retired priests. Awesome. You know, thank God. I think it's very, very sad when like a church building gets sold, it's transformed. Like a, recently there was some like school that got an old church and made it a weight room. How could you do that? How could you like lift in a former church? It's so gross. I love lifting weights. I love working out. I love athletics. It just feels inappropriate, you know, even the bones, whatever. So it's cool that this cynical is going to remain, you know, in the hands of the faithful, so to speak. As we are filled with gratitude for all the graces given through our dear, quote, Ronki, we feel that we cannot have found a buyer more aligned with our mission. But listen to this, guys. What's the first paragraph, Roshan? Well, here's what it says, right? Um, in their search for a place in the country almost 100 years ago, our Seneca sisters from St. Regis Seneca, New York City, were overwhelmed at the generosity of actress, you already know, our girl, Maude Adams, in readily donating her sprawling acreage in Rokokoma to the congregation, 
Her unexpected gift set the stage for the Holy Spirit to animate ever so many cynical sisters and retreatants to the years to persevere in prayer with Mary, the mother of Jesus, on these lovely grounds. Breaking news, breaking news, Maude Adams has been officially called a Catholic <laughs> by me. <laughs> Maude, Adams do Maude Adams donates land that by the grace of God, by the animation of the Holy Spirit, helps so many cynical sisters retreating through the years, hundreds of years of prayer. She's pretty Catholic in my book, right? Whether she became a Catholic or not, and now once more, there's no evidence she ever did. What a legend. God bless Maude Adams. I hope, I hope, by God's grace, she's in heaven. If she is, she's in a saint. She's a saint. And then we'd be able to say, if we knew that, you know, Maude Adams, Saint Maude Adams, pray for us. That would be wonderful if we can make that intention. I must stop short of that. I don't know. That's God's business. What an amazing woman, though. What an amazing woman. I haven't even talked about her acting yet, really, right? This is the whole Catholic part. Final point here before we get to her biography and boom, 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 straight through all the points. There's a dedication stone to Maude Adams at the Seneca, which reads very beautifully. It is twice blessed. It blessed him who gives and him who takes. Indeed, like she's blessed in the giving of this land, and then how blessed are we taking profit from it, going to these retreats, people that did. Your question, Barb, about the Maid of Orleans, um, I thank you for reminding me of that as well because I didn't mention that in her filmography. I was so focused on withholding the information about Peter Pan. Like, that's her most famous role way for it. But yeah, again, very appropriate. Ha ha, like our most recent Maple Syrup, history, Maple Syrup History episode was on Joan of Arc. She plays Joan of Arc in Maid of Orleans, 1909. But again, in terms of, and we're going to talk about, she's a very much a polymathematical figure, a Renaissance man, multiple talents. We're going to get to that in her biography now. But um, again, a lot of the stuff she does is even more credit to her artistic ability before the advent of recording and just live takes, theater, classic kind of theater. All right. Maude Adams, November 11th, 1872, July 17th, 1953, as we said earlier. At one point, her yearly income exceeds $1 million. Now, this is crazy because I think that's, I think they're saying $1 million, period. Like for that time, which is, at that time, that much money is going to grant you. I haven't figured out here like that later, a later biographer is saying that she was earning um, $20,000 a month of that time. $20,000 a month in 1900 is um, $740,000. Right. So if Maude Adams is earning that much money a month, seven forty dollars a month, mm -hmm. she's earning $8.8 .8 $8 million. Today. So she, she's again, whatever the numbers actually are however close to actually $10 million, whatever, again, whatever the actual numbers are, there is no question that Maude Adams um, is a class A actress already in her time regarded as a kind of peak performer. This is not some sad Van Gogh story, and it is sad. That Van Gogh, God of mercy on him, God rest his soul, shoots himself in despair, right? After cutting his ear off, everyone hates my art, and now he's Van Gogh. How do you think Van Gogh would have, you know, been sad if he found out his paintings sell for hundred million dollars? Probably not. Like that's pretty awesome. I couldn't give him away for free before. Well, that's, that's really cool. Maude Adams is not Van Gogh. Maude Adams is much more like Dante. Dante already in his lifetime, the Divine Comedy is being acclaimed and read aloud. Everyone's like Maude Adams is like Dante, except way better in every way. Uh, <laughs> have I made clear my sycophantic, gross Maude Adams is the best kind of fanhood yet? Okay, Maude Adams um, is born in Salt Lake City. Like I said again, her birth name actually is Maude Ewing Adams Kiskaden, or Kiskaden, K-I-S-K-A-D-D-E-N. Very interesting Scottish surname. Kiskaden, anyone like know, am I pronouncing that? Probably, again, I've got, I mean like seriously, everybody in Scotland watches the show. So I'm sure my, my Scottish followers, you guys could post <laughs> in the comments. Um, on her mother's side, Adams' great-grandfather, Platt Banker. Wow, that's not a real name. Sorry. Your last name is not actually Banker. That's a fake name. <laughs> Adams' great-grandfather, Platt Banker, I guess his real name, converted to Mormonism, moves his family to Missouri. His daughter, Julia, Mary, which I guess is um, Maude's grandmother, married Barnabas Adams. Barnabas and Julia then migrated as part of the first company to enter Salt Lake with Brigham Young. So she comes from Mormon stock. I don't think she was raised in the LDS faith, but she comes from a Mormon family. Like, this is, Maude Adams is so hilariously cool. 
She, her family is part of Brigham Young's Mormon arrival to Salt Lake, one of the most impressive like American in, interior events. And she also is descended from a Mayflower passenger, John Howland. Wow. Oh, and by the way, she was an alien. Like, I mean, like, what's next? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Maude Adams, a like, very, very cool story. She's a child actress. At the age of five, in the year 1877, she stars in this theater uh, thing, Little Schneider. That's, that's her character. Little Schneider in the play Fritz, Our German Cousin. And then in a different play, same time, uh, Adrian Renaud, a uh, celebrated case. At the age of nine, Adams lives with her Mormon grandmother and cousins in Salt Lake City while her mother remains back in San Francisco. So once again, as a, as a young girl, a little girl, she's both already active on the stage. That's because her mom was an actress. Uh -huh. Adams' mother, her, her, her uh, name was Annie. Uh, Adams, Maude Adams' mother, Annie, was an actress who would take like baby Maude on stage with her. So Maude, if you're following the beauty class, it's like a Mozart story. She's around acting from the time she can breathe. Like she's literally on stage in diapers, like when her mom's acting, like hanging out on the side or whatever. Maybe she's even in the play. She's a prop. You know, here's the baby, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> baby Maud is, you know, nine months old, like, ah, crying, you know, and like it's part of the play. I don't know. Maud is really active as a very, like, she's always kind of a young girl. Like she's, she starts making um, in, in the kind of um, grown up acting her breaks as a teenager. She's already very young. She becomes a star in her early 20s, very much a young woman. But I'm talking about like as a baby, like Mozart, from the time she's born, she's involved in acting. Or she goes to New York City. Uh, she goes to New York City um, at age 16, appears in something called The Paymaster. She becomes a then she becomes a member of E.H. Sothern's Theater Company in Boston appearing in Highest Bitter, and she's on Broadway in 1888 as a 16-year-old mm -hmm. in Lord Chumley. Is that good? Is that good to be on Broadway as a 16-year-old actor? Like, yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> like, it's very much like Joan of Arc. Like, Joan of Arc, great follow-up. I didn't do this intentionally, but not only does Maude Adams play Joan, Arc, Joan of Arc and made it really own, but it's like Maude Adams and Joan of Arc are very similar, like high school sophomore girls who are leading France to victory against the hated English and starring on Broadway. Um... In 1889, this guy, Charles H. Hoyt, casts her in a play called Midnight Bell as a 17-year-old. Bell is in like Ding Dong, not B, not, not Southern Bell E, not B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Bell like Ding Dong Bell. Midnight Bell. Um, and Hoyt offers her a five-year contract to like, you know, grow with his company or whatever. He's a director, theater director, whatever. My apologies to Charles H. Hoyt who of course also is dead, this is 1800s, may God rest his soul, may God rest all these people's souls. Sorry, Charles Hoyt, I hope you're laughing at my ignorance of your career from heaven, right? Now, I have no idea who this guy is, what his deal was. He offered a contract, bought Adam's shed, said, no, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> uh, Adam declines, she takes a, uh, a lesser offer financially from this guy named Charles Froman, F-R-O-H-M-A-N. And Froman basically like will guide her career from that time on. She signs with Froman as a 17 year old. Um, she starts playing leading roles for Froman. This is the domination I'm talking about. As an 18 year old in 1890, Maude Adams is now like, that's, you know, your Royal Highness Maude Adams to you. I'm no longer, you know, a teenage girl Maude Adams. I'm woman grown up leading lady Maude Adams. You know when she comes out and dominates? In the play called The Masked Ball. The Masked Ball. Um, she will begin in the 1890s being a, the leading lady in John Drew's company. Now before this gets too confusing, John Drew is a leading actor himself. Think John Drew like George Clooney or whatever. He's an actor. Drew links up with Froman's company. And Froman... The guy with whom Maude Adams signs with, for whom Maude Adams will start doing these like, you know, serious leading lady roles. Froman pairs Adams and Drew in plays together. Think about like, who is Audrey Hepburn's like co-star? Gregory Peck, one of these guys? I don't know. Cary Grant. Cary Grant, thank you. Yeah, it's one of these kind of stories. Like think of Adams and Drew, Cary and Grant, Hepburn, whoever, you know, 70 years before them. 
Adams is gonna spend five years as the leading lady in John Drew's company. This is where she comes of age. She's gonna go from like signing with him as 18 to you know, 24, 25, like I mean, really at the top of her game soon. The mask the ball opens up on October 8th, 1892. How old is Maude Adams? She's 20. Audiences came to see Drew, but left remembering Adams. She does this tipsy routine when she like gets faint, like she's gonna faint, right? That the standing that the audience gave her a two-minute standing ovation for. Wow. And uh, people say that, you know. It was really people had come out to see Adam, to see, come out to see Drew, the George Clooney guy, and they left like, oh yeah, by the way, never, ever, ever, ever forget Maude Adams. Harper's Weekly wrote, quote, it is difficult to see just who is going to prevent Miss Adams from becoming the leading exponent of light comedy in America. New York Times says, quote, not John Drew has made the success of the masked ball at Palmer's, but Adams, she is the star of the comedy. Manager Charles Froman, in attempting to exploit one star, Drew, has happened upon another of, quote, greater magnitude. Mm -hmm. By the time Maude Adams is 20 years old, this girl who's been acting her whole life, she's on full domination level. Um, then this eventually leads her to, um, it, we're, we're gaining towards her ultimate stardom role of Peter Pan in 1905. We're not there yet. Not there yet. She now, from the masked ball in 1892, her next huge role is as uh, Lady Babby. <laughs> I don't know what the show, the play Little Minister is about, but it sounds terrible, so uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, in the play Little Minister, um, Barry, J.M. Barry, the author of Peter Pan, also the author of... Uh, Little Minister. So isn't that cool? J.M. Barry, this author, is the author of Little Minister and most famously Peter Pan. Barry says, no one can play Little Lady Babby. And then Maude Adams comes in and she says, hold my beer. And he's like, I'm going to drink that beer, a.k.a. sign you forever. Like, he's like, J.M. Barry's like, ain't nobody can play Lady Babby from Little Minister. Maude Adams is like, yeah, you don't know, you haven't heard of Maude Adams. Now you have, and you're never going to forget it. And indeed, Barry attends this performance of Rosemary, of which Adams is a star, and he leaves like, there's no question. I want that woman, I don't know who she is, but I want her for Little Babby. The play opens in 1897, Little Minister, at the Empire Theater. Tremendous success, 300 performances in New York, 289 are standing room only. And it sets an all-time box office record of $370,000 of that time money. It's talking about millions of dollars, perhaps tens of millions of dollars in today's money. It also tours successfully, running for 65 performances in Boston. Before the old adage comes true, I wouldn't be caught dead in Boston, and they leave. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All apologies to all my Boston fans. I have, guys, you have no idea. I get letters from like people in Boston College being like they want to rename the school Maple Syrup University. They <laughs> like the... <laughs> um, Her big star, her big break, as we said, is Peter Pan. Peter Pan or the boy who wouldn't grow up. She's the first actor to play Peter Pan on Broadway, as you said, Barb. So remember your earlier question? Is she involved in New York? Her entire career happens like in the, the limelight, in the big city, in the Big Apple. She's Frank Sinatra before he's Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. If I can make it there, you know, like she, that's that's her from the beginning. Um, she also designs the Peter Pan costume, and it has a huge fashion success that that, that Peter Pan collar is called is called that she designed becomes a thing. Second quick uh, point: Maude Adams designs lights in the theater that become industry standard for Hollywood. Wow. So this woman is unbelievably talented, gifted in all kind of performative arts measures. Let's wrap up her biography and I'll talk about you know, why I think what's special about her. I've got eight points to give her more and more props because we can never give her enough credit. Um, you know how people buy actresses flowers and like, throw them on stage? That's what I want to do with my words right now. <laughs> Encore, mod. Encore, please. She retires in 1918 after a severe bout of influenza. Maude Adams. Wow. First, you know, coming with the Mormon family, Brigham Young, 
Mayflower thing. She's also part of the Spanish flu. That's the Spanish flu. Wow. 1918, the worst. Um, remember, the, the Great War ends. Yeah. And we think, um, well, you know, the worst is behind us. The um, Spanish flu will claim more lives than the Great War even. It's not without reason, right? Gertrude Stein, the art patroness, once filling up her car in the 1920s, I'm probably giving this quote before, this guy's taking forever. And she yells at him, you know, uh, vous êtes tous la génération perdue. She yells this at him. You are all the lost generation. And he could have been like, yeah, lady, you know, one of every four Frenchmen was killed in the war and those that weren't killed died in the, the plague, the Spanish flu. Maude Adams, in the theme of her life, always being like in the limelight, despite again, how humble is she? Always rejecting it personally, very humble woman. But I'm saying, you know, in New York, Boston, million dollar acting, part of Brigham Young's troupe, you know, her family was, Mayflower, and she survives the Spanish flu. During the 1920s, she works with General Electric to patent and improve stage lightning and color photography. It's been suggested one of the reasons why she did this was she wanted to appear in a color film version of Peter Pan and wanted better tech for it. It's so awesome. It's like people, if anyone has seen, I'm sure a lot of you have, you know, Avatar, right? People say James Cameron, the director of Avatar, waited a long time for um, the technology to catch up to do that. Maud Adams is like, I'm gonna do Peter Pan with Peter Pan fashion color um, with good lighting. I'm gonna improve this tech. Uh, she's, she steps away really um, for a while during the 20s. After 13 years away from acting, she returns to do some regional production of the Shakespeare plays. This is like Babe Ruth after retiring from baseball deciding to play in a local men's league, you know, like, just for fun, and he's just gonna hit nine home runs a game. Like, really, I can't stress enough how A-list, no, I, I'm, I'm gonna invent a new term. Maude Adams is not A-list, she's Greek letter list. It's not even English letter. It's like better than A, <laughs> like whatever. Like she's not even, she's higher than that. She's incredible. She comes back, does Shakespeare plays, she plays in Portia and the, uh, the Merchant of Venice, Maria and Twelfth Night. 1934 in Maine, yeah. She retires in 1918 and she comes back. In the 1930s, yeah, to do kind of, but, but comes back not in her, does not come back in her, um, to, to full stardom. She doesn't want that. She comes back just to do kind of regional plays. And how cool is this? Between 1937 and 49, how old is she in 1937? She at that point already is what, 65? And she's, she's older at this point. Still, you know, not, not like in her, well, she doesn't make it to her 80s and 90s, but she's not super old, but she's already definitely, you know, way past her acting prime. She um, heads the drama department at Stevens College in Missouri for 12 years. How cool is that? You need to learn acting from Maude Adams is like Mozart was my piano teacher kind of thing. Um, all right. Stevens College, spell with a PH, Stevens College in Missouri. Okay. All right. Here's, this is this is wow. Becoming known as an inspiring teacher in the arts of acting, whatever. I mean, was she inspiring or not? I'm gonna say times a million probably. I mean, that's the kind of statement where it's like, and he changed a lot of lives. I mean, like, okay, great. I understand. Like, that's just like what you say. You know, she was so great, but she really was. She really was. What are eight things about Maud Adams that I think are really cool? Let's throw eight bouquets of flowers to Maud Adams for the encore. Number one. Maude Adams, I think, and we know as Catholics, beauty. Beauty leading towards the beautiful, which is, you know, who God alone possesses true beauty in all its fullness. Number one, Maude Adams lived Matthew 25, make the most of your talents. Maude Adams did not hide her light under a bushel. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Maude Adams didn't like the limelight, right? She could have been like, oh, I'm, I shouldn't get up there. Who am I? I'm just some dumb girl. Like, no, no, she became the star of her time and praise God. And, and again, it was reputed as... We started talking a little about the Catholic stuff, whatever. I'm talking about just as an actor, period. Like just acting. Reputed as like the best actor, like an actor's actor, fantastic actor. If there's any actor I can compare to today, there's a Russian actress, Maria Alexandrova, who actually played, who's a theater actress too, and played um, Catherine the Great in this Amazon show, Ekaterina. Maria Alexandrova reminds me actually a lot of Maud Adams, really. Now that's not a professional opinion. I don't know film, I'm an idiot. Like I'm not saying here, well, my film critical appraisal, I'm just saying on the eyeball test, like the kind of pure, deep acting talent, kind of pure, Maude Adams is regarded as kind of a natural, especially putting it. 
I see a lot of that, like in watching, having, having watched Katarina and some of Maria Alexandrova's performances. All right, so number one, she makes the most of her talent. Number two, her physical beauty. I said that again, like she was extraordinarily beautiful and it, it should go without saying, there's nothing wrong with that. There's everything wrong with vanity and like, you know, looking down on people and it being only about beauty. I think everybody would agree if actors, men and women, when they're attractive, can better embody, especially attractive roles. I think it matters if you have a beautiful woman like Maude Adams playing Joan of Arc, gets you the believability of the most important beautiful part of Joan, which is her soul and her action stuff. So Maude Adams too. Maude Adams too, okay? I'm blessed with you know, beauty from God. I will use that in a way of like enhancing my acting. Nothing wrong with that. We don't talk enough in this class about physical beauty. Our culture obsesses over physical beauty. In this class, we're only ever talking really about kind of spiritual beauty. It was a, very much a fact of her life again, regarded, like I said, once more and a final time by a lot of people as the most beautiful American woman um, of all time. Very subjective. I think the most beautiful American woman of all time is my wife, Kate. But again, how, how, do, you, how do you rank that? It's impossible. It's just that, you know, once more, um, these are not scientific considerations, but they, they, they are factors that matter, I believe. Number three, uh, I think she lived like the good meaning of acting. Acting is supposed to ennoble the spirit. Acting is not supposed to be about stupid tabloid crap and scandals. Acting is supposed to be like, wow, I saw Maude Adams and Joan of Arc, I'm inspired. So I learned the story of Joan, hopefully grow my faith to like our last episode, not give up in the face of adversity. Maud Adams, in embodying her character, raised the human spirit to higher considerations, ultimately towards God. Even unintentionally. You don't have to make a movie that's like uh, just a movie about Bible verses. You can do that, and that's awesome, but it doesn't have to be so on the nose. Her playing a wholly secular role could be an act of evangelization, of like pointing towards the beautiful God and her beautiful acting. Number four, she's very humble. Very humble woman. Very cool. She definitely could have been all cocky and like, I'm the best, I'm the best, everyone's terrible compared to me. No. No. What does she like to do? Hide behind trees and play with her dogs, right? Like, please leave me alone, paparazzi. Mm -hmm. um, number five, she was always advocating for others. Becomes a drama teacher later in life to help students. She didn't need the money. She doesn't have to do that. She wants to help the next generation. Famous stories when, like, theaters tried to write, raise prices or whatever. She would say, no, like, I want you to pay that money back. You're, like, pumping up the tickets because you know I'm going to sell. Perhaps, you know, help other actors have a more, you know, equity equitable share of the pie. Again, some of these I'm speculating here on. I don't want to mislead and say every time she came in, like from what I've read and heard from her, she always was concerned with like the well-being of others around her. She was an anti-prima donna. She was not, I'm the best, I'm Maude Adams, I'm the best. Like she was always concerned about those around her, which is just a very, very duh Christian attitude. It's Christianity 101. You know, love God above all of your neighbors yourself. She really seemed to love her neighbor as herself. Number six, polymathematical talent, Renaissance man. Great actor. She's also, you know, her lighting becomes the, the Hollywood standard. Um, she designs this, this, this fashion thing. Most actors and actresses are not fashion. They might be fashion icons. Oh, did you see blank and blank on the red carpet? But she's actually serving in the wardrobe department. She's a very talented person overall. And then look at her, like her, you know, um, mindset. Look at her mindset with the convent stuff at the end, kind of a broad-minded person, much more to a polymathematical quality, thinking outside of just the theater. I can really help these nuns, even if it's done because they helped me in my breakdown, like a larger vision, a woman of grand visions. Number seven, we need artists to fight all the robots. Like, great, you just have, great, I'm just gonna go be a baker, cool, and then I'm just gonna do my job. You guys know I'm obsessed with plumbers. If I was ever going to be a blue collar worker, I'd be a plumber. Plumbing is so cool. But what does a plumber do after he's done plumbing? Just watch plumbing videos? He wants to be entertained, right? Like that's part of the human spirit. Maude Adams speaks that need. Everyone needs to have like good entertainment. You know why I, I took on nine houses to plumb today? Because I'm going to go see Maude Adams on stage later. I'm excited about that. As it makes my life happy, like that, right? We need that. Like making others happy. That's why comedians, that's not a, I think that's a noble profession. Making someone laugh can help someone heal, whatever, like, Oh, this new special came out from a comedian, and I can't wait to watch it. People have that attitude, right? It's, I think it's very good. I had a tough day today. I need to laugh. Let's find a comedian. What if we have no artists? Well, I guess I could just watch people change pipes. No, right? Life <laughs> is not 
all plumber stuff, right? You need artists to fight all the robots. Down with the robots, I do declare. Um, and finally, last point, number eight, closing out the class. Talk about her hidden faith. How beautiful. Our Lady, our Blessed Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, says in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter two, I think even chapter two, verse 19, if I'm not mistaken. Like, and Mary pondered all these things in her heart. I think in that context there, we're getting pretty soon talking about Simeon and Lord, you may let your servant go in peace. My eyes have seen the salvation of Israel and the Messiah. Uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, how often, and St. Joseph too, says nothing. Talk about the ultimate quiet scene. Holy family, you know, pray for us. Um, Our Lady, in realizing, you know, as the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, as the Mother of the Messiah, had this quiet pondering in her heart. Maud Adams, whatever her personal faith or not, I don't know, is that kind of beautiful hidden faith. It's very hidden. It's not for public conception. Now, how dare you? It's none of your business. I love that about her, right? She's always these convents. What is she doing there? Well, I assume, you know, going on retreat, I assume most likely she's going to convent. She's probably participating in the prayers and, well, you know, whatever, the spiritual direction, all that. I don't know. And I love that. Christ says, pray with a closed door. Let your heavenly father see and repay you. What an awesome theme for Holy Week that we may pray, you know, quietly away from the eyes of others. Amen, I say to you, they've received their reward. You know, the hypocrites, the trumpets on the street corners. That was not Maude Adams. A very hidden faith. And what a beautiful legacy at the end. Yeah. Could have given her money to anything. Gives it to these sisters. So God bless Maude Adams. God bless all of you guys. And see you later. Until next time. <laughs>